No! NASA's Kennedy Space Center is a must visit if you find yourself in Orlando, and it pairs really well with a Disney trip. It's the best place to go see rockets launch into space. But after going there myself, I realized there was a few things I wish I had known before going. Here's five essential things you should know before visiting Kennedy Space Center. Number one, check the launch schedule often. One of the coolest things you can do at or around the Space Center is to watch a rocket launch. The good news is that with the rise of commercial space companies, rocket launches happen all the time now. Last year, there were over 90 rocket launches in the area. The thing is that flights that have astronauts on them that are named things like Crew 7, Crew 8, those are announced far in advance, but they're usually few and far between. Rockets carrying payloads like Starlink satellites happen way more often. But the problem is, and the thing that caught us off guard when we visited, is that they don't post these up until a day or two before they happen. So if you're near the Cape and you don't see any launches on the schedule, keep checking each day, especially if your schedule is flexible. Number two, book things far in advance. When I think of museums, I don't usually think about booking things in advance. But here, if you want to do everything, you pretty much have to. Basically, there's a free bus ride that takes you to a separate part of the museum inside the Kennedy Space Center. The tour lets you see things like the VAB, where they configure rockets before launching them. It's got this cool upside down T-shaped door that you can fit things like the space shuttle through. But there's a much more in-depth tour called the Explore Tour, which you have to pay extra money for. And this is actually the one that you have to book weeks and weeks in advance. It books up really fast. This one allows you to stop over at a lot more places and get photo opportunities. The other thing to know with the free bus tour is that it drops you off at another area that has its own set of exhibits. So it's not a quick round trip. So you gotta budget some time just to do that alone. There's also some activities or exhibits that you have to book in advance too. The one that we noticed was a Blue Origin virtual reality flight experience. You get to sit inside of a new Shepard capsule with a VR headset and experience flying on Blue Origin with realistic data and seats that shake and vibrate. This apparently also gets booked really fast. So if you want to do it, get there early. And as soon as you get in, go to the Deep Space Launch Complex that has all the newer space vehicles in it. And there you can reserve your spot first thing. Number three, you might have to sell your kidney to go. What? Admission alone is $75 per person. Then you got options with guided explore tours, chat with an astronaut, VIP experiences, Kennedy under the stars. I mean, like there's so much that you can pay for here. To me, $75 per person is incredibly pricey, especially because you're seeing rockets and spaceflight equipment that's paid for by taxpayer dollars. So if you got a family of four, that's 300 bucks right there. And they have sponsors. Admittedly, it's an amazing and massive museum, but the paywalling kind of feels gross. Number four, leave wiggle room for all your activities. A lot of KSC is set up like Disney park rides. Yeah. <laughs> it's like way better than I thought that. <laughs> In just about every major exhibit, there's some pre-show or two pre-shows. So instead of just walking to a big hall and going and seeing all the exhibits at your leisure, you might watch a short movie. Then head into another room for a motion experience on a giant screen or an animated mission control center before you can actually go and look at things. So if you're thinking you can just pop in somewhere quick, just know it's actually gonna take you a while to get through. There's even an actual ride where you strap in just like straps that you see at the theme parks and go through a space shuttle mission. It's all cool, just time consuming. Tip number five, take your time in the memorial areas. This one's more of a suggestion. There are some memorial areas honoring people who lost their lives in spaceflight, and they're really worth taking in and gaining an appreciation for the sacrifices that people made in the name of learning how to fly off of Earth. If you take your time, you can reflect on what it took us to get this far in human spaceflight. Okay, so if you're going to Kennedy Space Center, keep some of these things in mind, have a great time, and enjoy one of the largest collections of spaceflight memorabilia there is. And all right next to where many of humanity's rockets are launched to space. <laughs>